prayer, or have you just said, well, I know I could do it if I would. I believe I could sing better than that person who's singing now, or I believe I could build a business, or I could do this, or I could do that. Are you going to do what you could be? Honestly, are you worth anything in your own estimation? Do you set a price on yourself? Have you set a price on your ability, on your time? What is your word worth to you? When you say, I will get that lesson, I will conquer that subject, I will master that problem, is your word worth anything? Do you make your word come true when you say, I will give that up, I will put that thing over? What is your word worth to you? Have you faith in your own word? I'm not asking what your word is worth outside. Pride may make you keep, keep your word with people, but do you keep your word with yourself? You are too valuable to barter away the finest part of manhood or womanhood, your word. You are worth more to yourself likely than to anyone else. But by a year from now, can you make yourself so valuable that men will pay any price for you? Great corporations are looking for men and women that they can pay large amounts of money. Amen. Set your mark, your standard high. Then go up there. Allow no day to go by in which you have not improved yourself. Take an inventory again and again and see what you possess. See whether that possession is more valuable today than it was a year ago. Find where your ability lies. Then put all your best into that ability and make that ability come across and put you over. Remember that when what you have hungered and yearned to do, you have the ability to do if you will. Everybody say, thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. What I think about, talk about. What I think about, talk about. I bring about. I bring about. I'm going to give you another one today. Energy goes where attention goes. Energy goes where attention goes. Say it again. Energy goes where attention goes. All right? So I'm going to need your attention when I preach this word. So you need energy. You know, if you put your attention on the word of God and you release your energy, you'll receive something. Everybody stand up with me. Let's get energized. Let's get energized. We was energized during worship. Let's get energized for the Word of God. We spoke to God. We praised our God. We worshiped our God. Now God wants to speak to us. Yeah. I want you to understand the man's going to be speaking, but God's speaking through the man. Amen. Do you understand that? Amen. God is speaking through the man. Amen. God is speaking through the man. So you've got to really dial in because communication is a very difficult thing. I've already lost half of it. I'm here. That's how quick it is. That's how quick it is. Communication is a hard thing. It's a two-way street. It's 50% on me and it's 50% on you to receive. So you have to lock in. How do you focus your attention? You get selfish. You get selfish. You say, there's something in that man that God's speaking through just for me, and I'm going to get mine. Amen. Say, look at somebody and say, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get, get mine. mad about it. Get mad about it. Say, I am going to get mine. I am going to get mine. mine. God created the heaven and the earth and ordained this moment in time just for me. Just. And some of you already, your attention's gone. Jesus. <laughs> Some of you have already lost your attention. You're not going to get what God's got for you unless you focus and Amen. you get in there and you pull it. Amen. You've got to pull it to you. This is life or death. Yes. You have a moment in time to grab what you need and you've got to reach out there, focus your mind to work instead of going all over the sanctuary, checking out the baby, seeing what baby's doing, seeing what's playing. Here in the first round, you've got to focus your attention. Now get energized and say, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get mine. Get that energy up. Get that voice up. Part of the shout that the church lost was energy. Amen. They lost vibration. They lost power. They lost the shout. Because you let the energy slip away. And you put your attention on worthless things and all your energy is burned out the time you get the house of God. My energy is burned. Out before I get to the house of God because my attention is focused on other things. Come on. Focus on God's word. Amen. You say. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Amen. I want to talk to you about the power of your words. Now here's what we got to do. We're going to do some things. Before we go to give some quotes on words maybe you haven't heard before. One kind word can change.
change someone's entire day. Unknown fortune. Mother Teresa said, kind words can be short and easy to speak, but the echoes are truly endless. Joel Osteen, be careful what you say. You can say something hurtful in 10 seconds, but 10 years later, the wounds are still there. Amen. Betty Eden, if you understood the power of our thoughts, we would guard them more closely. If we understood the awesome power of our words, we would prefer silence to almost anything. Amen. In our thoughts and words, we create our own weakness and our own strength. Our limitations and joy begin in our heart. We can always replace negative with positive. Yes. Unknown. Words are seeds that do more than blow around. They land in our heart and not the ground. Be careful what you plant. Be careful what you say. You might have to eat what you planted one day. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want us to examine very quickly what the heart is before we get into this message, message on releasing the creative force of this week. I am convinced beyond all doubt that your heart is not your spirit. If you believe that your heart is your spirit, it will mess your theology up. You will not understand what God is saying in many, many scriptures. Because you all do not have a spirit, you are. Spirit. You possess a soul and you live in a body. Your heart is part of your mind. It is called the subconscious, what they would call the subconscious, pre-conscious, whatever kind of conscious you want. So when it talks about renewing the mind, the part that has to be renewed is the subconscious or the heart. Because remember, you didn't get born, you didn't want born into this earth, born again. You had a life before salvation. And you got programmed with all kind of negative junk and garbage. And even since you've been a Christian, that, that heart, that subconscious has been programmed by your thoughts, your feelings, your words, and your emotions every single day. So, I want to just give you one scripture to support this. I can give you more. For the Word of God is living. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow. What's joints and marrow? That's your soul, your body. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What's he talking about? Four parts of your being. There's a lot more parts of your being than those four, than those four parts. When we say spirit, we're not talking about a blah. That spirit is ever been as complex as your spirit. You are a spirit is ever been as complex as your body. You are fearfully and wonderfully made on every level. As they begin to just open up the brain, they're finding out things about our brain that's amazing. Do you know that your conscious mind can only contain a very small part of information? But your unconscious mind can handle over 10 billion bits of information. I mean, it's amazing what's happening. Everything you've ever heard, everything you've ever ever been exposed to is inside that, that conscious. Did you know that? I mean, your subconscious is in there. It knows. It remembers. Now, let's talk about what we just said a while ago. It, remember, energy flows where attention goes. Focus your attention on what I'm telling you today because you're going to learn once and again very powerfully two powerful things. The power of affirmations or conf confirmations or confessions or the words you speak and more importantly, some of you won't learn why your affirmations don't work. How many of you would say, not my to raise your hand, but some of you are too prideful to admit it? How many of you know that a lot of your affirmations don't work? You've been affirming things, you've been confessing things, but you don't get the results. There's a reason. And if you listen carefully, you reach out there and grab your moment and you see what God is speaking through the man to you, you'll get it and it'll change your life. Okay? So let's get into it. Now I'm about to share some very familiar scriptures with you, so I need you to do something very important. I need you to, to decide. Because you have the power to do this. I need you to decide right now to act as if you've never heard those scriptures before a day in your life. Okay. I want you to wipe out everything you know about those scriptures. Believe me, it's still going to be there. You're not going to lose it. It'll be there at the end of the message. You can pick up everything you know. But here's what happens when I read a scripture that you're familiar with, 
what happens is voices arise in your mind and in your heart or what somebody's told you those scriptures mean and you lock down and say, I know it and you don't learn about one thing else. Yeah. Familiarity breeds contempt. I want you to hear these, these like you've never heard of this. I want you to say something with me. Say this out loud. Say, body, body mind, 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 soul, soul. Listen, up. listen up. I'm talking to you. I have charge over you. I'm going to hear these words like I've never heard them before. I'm going to get a new revelation today. I'm not going to be bound to what I know in the past. I'm going to learn something new today. So listen up. Pay attention. Pay attention. In Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. Proverbs 18, 4. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The well spring of wisdom is a flowing brook. Now I want you to listen to this from Proverbs 18, 6 through 8. A fool's lips enter into contentions, and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down to the inmost life. I'm going to give you a poly, a polysyllabic profundity proper. Everybody say polysyllabic profundity proper. Yeah. Polysyllabic profundity proper is what this scripture really is. A polysyllabic profundity proper is where you say something that's real simple and you make it real complicated. God said something, and it may be too complicated for you, but when you hear this, everybody say it with you. We're hearing a polysyllabic profundity proverb. What the scripture is saying, do not let your alligator mouth overload your hummingbird butt. Everybody say it with me. Do not let your alligator mouth overload your hummingbird butt. Because that's what Scripture's talking about. A man's mouth calls into contention. He gets angry. He gets upset. How many has ever got angry got upset and got beat down and wished you hadn't got angry and hadn't got upset? Amen. Or got into an argument with your wife and said things and she said things back and you wished you had never went there. Because you let your mouth, your words run away with you. Words will take you over. Words will take you over. And like Joel Osteen said, they'll do much damage. So we have to have control of our words, don't we? Yeah. Proverbs 18, 21. Act like you've never heard it before a day in your life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. We don't usually read the second part. And those that love it will eat its fruit. What it just said is right out in your mouth. Every, every word, not just the ones when you're at church, not just the ones when you want to make a confession of what you want to happen in your life, but every single word you speak is either death or life, and you're going to live by the fruit of that. Amen. You live by what you speak. It is the fruit of your life. It's what you, everything in your life that you have right now. It's because of the words you spoke, the thoughts you thought, and the emotions you had. Your whole life has brought you to this point of what you thought, what you said, and the emotions you had. That's what that's how it happened. It's not by accident. God created you in his likeness and his image. Your words are created all the time. All the time. If I said all the time. All the time. When you speak dead, you speak it over yourself or you speak it over someone else. Or you can speak life over you or life over someone else. I want this church to be a dream maker, not a dream killer. How many of you ever had your dreams here? MIT done a study. They found out that these engineering students, if somebody comes along and tells them they can't, it takes seven other people, 17 other people to tell them they can before they believe. Wow. That's the power of the negative word. Somebody says, you can't. It takes 17 other people to come by and tell them you can before they believe. In the place where it matters, where they can actually do it. Never tell your children they can't. 
They were telling the truth. Don't kill people's dreams. Don't kill people's dreams. I was listening to something last night. I was talking to Andy about this guy named Matt Warren. He's a multi-billionaire now in real estate. I was just watching. And uh, he said he was working in a machine shop. Realized, you know, his life wasn't really going anywhere. He didn't want to work. I think he was working 70 some hours a week. He wanted something different in his life. So he began to read about real estate. Didn't have any money. He was living in a 300 square foot apartment. Didn't have any money. But he began to read about real estate, began to study, began to get. And so he was sharing with the guy he worked with. He said, You know what? He said, I think I'm, I think I'm going to get real estate. The guy said, Look, buddy, you don't have to sell me in real estate. He said, I understand the money is in the real estate. But he, he said, I believe there's money in real estate. He said, I just don't believe you can do it. He said that crushed him. That crushed him for a little bit. But then you know what? He had, to, he had to speak to himself. He had to speak life over himself. He had to get up and believe in his dream and not let somebody else tell him. How many have been told you can't? Amen. Oh, I believe others can, but you can't. That's either going to crush you or it's going to make you mad and make you go out and do it. Amen. Amen. How many of you ever got mad when somebody told you you can't? You went out and you wanted to prove them wrong. Yeah. Right? Most people, did you know if you take 10 people, 9 people would rather die to change? Amen. Yeah. 9 people would rather die out of 10 people to change. Change is hard. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't see people change. <laughs> the most change you see in people in the Christian body is when they first get born again. You see a great transformation. And then something happens. Somehow the church, they get in church, they get and they stall. They quit changing. Let me tell you something, it's easy to give up addictions. It really is. I mean, I know people have addictions and I know they struggle for years, but when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, once they make up their mind, they want to be free, and they get hold of God, that addiction falls away pretty quickly. But when you've been a certain way for a long time, you've got attitudes, you've got mindsets built up in you strongholds that make you the way you are, right? It's hard to change. It takes work. It takes labor. I mean, it takes you working on you. Most people are trying to change someone else. Let me tell you how, how hard that is. If you can't change you, what in the world makes you think you can change another human being? Amen. Amen. You can't do it. Jesus Christ is the only one that can change a man. Amen. And even after Jesus gets hold of a man, guess what? God's hands are tied to a certain point because you have free will. And if you will to be a certain way, think a certain way, talk a certain way, guess what? You're going to say that certain way. That's right. But when you decide you want to be something different, and you begin to change your thoughts, change the way you speak, change your emotions by the word you speak and the thoughts you think, you can change your very life. Amen. Amen. You say, well, Lee, this is just motivational stuff. No, this is Bible Amen. stuff. Amen. God wants you to change. Matter of fact, God ain't into change. God's into this thing called transformation. That's right. God wants you to so renew your mind, so renew your thoughts, that you walk, talk, look like the Son of God Amen. on the earth, except through your personality, which is your view individually. Amen? Amen. How many of you want to change? Amen. It's hard work. It's hard work. You're going to have to sweat. You're going to have to watch every thought. You're going to have to watch every word. Amen. Let me tell you something. You want the life God wants you to have, you must lose negativity. Amen. All of us are playing by negativity. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. How many of you, come on, I want to, how many of you really want to change? Amen. How many of you are willing to listen to this man that God's speaking to? Amen. Amen. You go, if you want to change, you want to cut TV off. You want to quit watching so much news. How many of you know the news is negative? How many of you watch the news to get angry? Yeah. Frustrated? Yeah. Angry? Mad? How many of you know that what you're watching ain't a whole lot you're going to lie? Well, you can vote. Every four years, every two years, you can vote. And how many of you voted when they still elected the person you didn't like? Amen? So, you can't go all about it, but you can do something about you. Amen. And if you're going to be positive, you've got to quit listening to negative things. Amen. 
you got to be, you got to take something. You got to stop being around negative people. Amen. What y'all, what y'all, is Debbie Downer song? Uh -huh. Let me tell you something. If you're trying to be positive, if you're trying to believe, if you're trying to start a business, you're trying to do something, you're trying to elevate yourself in life, you don't need to be around a bunch of people telling you you can't do it. Amen. Oh, I know so and so. They tried that and they went broke. They're bankrupt today. Oh, that's just a gimmick. Oh, you know you don't have the education. You don't have the money. You don't have the ability to do any of that. Let me tell you something. You better keep that McDonald's job that you got right now because you know what? You believe that? You lose that McDonald's job, you're going to starve. Better hang on to what you got. Don't risk anything. Don't, don't do anything. You can't listen to people like that. Amen. You can't listen to it. Love, bless them, be quiet, and get away from them as soon as possible. Amen. And find you somebody that's going to be positive and build you up. Let me tell you something. What you judge in others is going to come back to you. Yes. It's, going to, it's going to prevent you. If you judge people that are poor, let me tell you something. It's going to stop you from being rich. It will stop you. Why? Because you're, you're passing a judgment on people just like you. People are just like you. I don't care what color their skin is. I don't care their education. They're people just like you. And what you judge from another person, you actually judge in yourself. That's why God says, judge not, and you be not judged. When you pass things and begin to judge other people in a negative way, guess what? All that's coming back to you. Amen. It's called an all soul and reaping. There's no yes, difference around it. A lot of what's happening to us is the words we spoke have boomeranged and come back. How many of you have ever said, I'll never do that, but you did it? I would never say that when you said it. Yep. Why? Why? Words of boom on They're coming back. They're coming back. We have to be watching. We have to watch. Good work, brother. Go with me, Matthew, on 20. 12, excuse me, Matthew 12, verse 35. Act like you never heard before. A good man, out of the good treasure of his what? Heart. Brings forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. Stop right there. All of us have a treasure in our heart. Everybody say, I got a treasure in my heart. I got a treasure in my heart. Look at your neighbor say, I got a treasure in my heart. I got a treasure in my heart. It's good or it's evil? How did he get there? God didn't say, okay, you know what, Name I like Nina, so I'm going to give Nina a good treasure and I'm going to put it in the heart. Pam, I'm kind of halfway like Pam, but not really. I'm going to give Pam a evil treasure. God didn't do that. God will give some men good treasure and some men evil treasure. Right. So how did that treasure get in the heart? Come on. How did that treasure get in there? Come on, we've got to quit reading the Bible and start thinking about the Bible. Right. We've got to quit reading into it and read out of it. How did the treasure get in their heart? We put it in there. They put it in there. How did they put it into their heart? Subconscious. Remember the heart is your subconscious. Don't think it's some blob of your spirit, which is not a blob. How do you get in it? It's in your thoughts, your words, and your emotions. <coughs> what you think about, what you talk about all the time, it gets inside your subconscious. And guess what it does? It programs you. It programs you that if you run up on some certain situation without you even thinking about it anymore, this thing is convinced. This is what you want. This is what you want to do. And so that's what comes up out of it. See, if you've been negative all your life, critical, judgmental people all your life, it don't even, you don't even think about it anymore. The subconscious mind just immediately responds that way. When you see somebody that don't fit your fancy, they just don't, you just don't lie. But there's something about them, they say something that sets you off, or you don't particularly like the way they wear their hair, the way they say what they say, you immediately, 
out of the subconscious, out of your heart, comes forth that evil treasure spewing out. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit can't change. You said, Brother Lee, I was just blasphemous. You mean the Holy Spirit can't change? Not without your permission. Not without your help. Holy Spirit ain't going to speak words over your life. Holy Spirit's not going to talk in you. Holy Spirit's not going to thank for you. Holy Spirit's not going to make you feel certain emotions. Those are all yours. And you're the only one that do it. Now, He'll help you. You'll see us the help. Yeah. And you have to cry. But you know what a helper does? The helper's just there. Like you're an electrician, the helper's handing you the tools to do the job. But He don't do the job for you. He's the helper. So what you're getting in these messages that you've been listening to for the last two months is the Holy Spirit helping you, providing you tools. But you have to do it. That means the next time you get into a situation where your mouth, your alligator mouth, begins to overload your hummingbird butt, you begin to talk about everybody and skew on everybody around you and bring forth all that death that's in your subconscious mind and just throw it on everybody. Poison the atmosphere with death. You got to stop yourself and say, "I'm not going to do this anymore." Amen. And then you begin to reprogram your thoughts, your emotions, and your mind by speaking the right things over people. Begin to bless people. Begin to be a dream maker, not a dream killer. Begin to speak good things over people. Begin to bless people. Begin to speak. I don't care if they fail every single time. You do what Jesus said to do. Seven times seven. You forgive them 490 times. That's been one day, by the way. And the next day, the count starts over. You forgive them. You treat them as if they've never sinned, just like Jesus did you. You treat them just like you want to be treated. That when you fail and you come up short and you have a bad day, you have a flesh out and act a fool. You want people to forgive you, then you forgive the people that act the fool around you. And you speak positive things over them and you bless them and you get to the place where your mind is just like it's got a helmet on. You just will not let that negativity in, that negative stuff, because it's killing you and everybody else around you. Amen. 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 God wants to release His life through you, but it has to go through the filter of your subconscious, your heart. So we have to get a different treasure. If we've got evil treasure in there, we've got to get a good treasure. Amen. 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 You don't have to learn to talk to yourself. Don't let people tell you, oh, you're going to speak crazy. You're talking to yourself. No, you've got to talk to yourself. Sister Nick said every time you go by a mirror, remind yourself that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. You need to do that. You really need to do that. You need to get in there and say, you know what? God in that mirror, woman in that mirror, God lives in you. The God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That took more power than the creation of all the earth, by the way. That is the single greatest power, release of power God's ever demonstrated is in raising Jesus Christ from the dead. You realize He didn't just raise His body from the dead. He raised the real Jesus, the Spirit, from the dead. That took all of us, more power from God than any of us. And that same power is in you. Amen. But it's got to go through that filter. Amen. Alright. Does everybody understand that? Let's look at this. Let's look at this whole script. Let's look at the rest of this. Verse 36. But I say to you that for every idle word, that word means non productive, every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. You know, when you stand before God, you have to give account of everything that's come out of this mouth. Amen. Every word. Every time you picked up that phone and slaughtered somebody with your tongue, you got to give an account. Amen. Every time I've done it, i got to give an account. Every time I said something negative about somebody, every time I talked about another preacher when I didn't know the story, i got to give an account. Because what was I doing? I was doing death. Amen. Because by my words, Justified or by my words, I'll get down. You know, when God, when we say, every word you stand full of judgment, see your whole life's going to be played out before you. Yes. You know what I think is going to happen? This is my opinion. Everybody said, Brother Lee's opinion. Brother Lee's opinion. My opinion is that we're, we're very much like a computer. 